lot of the talk that's really been going on is this YBN on Almighty J situation. He was jumping mm. talk, and then we had uh, Jay Prince uh, chime in and hit some people up online, which I thought was a little strange. Um, just, you know, Jay Prince is Jay Prince, and he has his reputation, and I didn't even think of it until I heard other people chime in and say it, but he did kind of speak on something a little crazy on the internet, which which you really wouldn't expect from, uh, you know, somebody of that tier of street respect. What um, you talking about? Well, he he went online and he uh, pretty much added a whole bunch of rappers, people, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock, and he pretty much said, you know, if if anybody knows what's going on or whatever, like. He pretty much warned everybody, like, and it was it was kind of seen as snitching. You know what I'm saying? Which, which, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. So I, I think that was that was an in- interesting conversation because I really didn't think of that until I was seeing it be said, and I was like, hmm, you know, that that's pretty interesting. Um, how how do you feel about that whole debacle? Yeah, like I, I go back and forth in terms of this the snitching only because I think I heard Joe Budden or somebody talk about it, but they were basically saying, I mean, the boys were already like out there bragging about it. So it wasn't like they were snitching, you know what I'm saying? Right. And they were just shout, shouting them out. They were already on the ground bragging about it. So that part, I don't know about the snitching part. That might be a reach. And that's, that would be extremely out of character, obviously, but it's also out of character for, for him to put it on the gram. As a matter of fact, not just Jay Prince for how he moves, but just to be somebody his age, right? <laughs> and, right. and resort to the gram is like a out of here to move in general. So that part was a little weird. But at first, I don't, I don't understand, like, like just the young dudes, man. I, I just, I, I hate that they don't understand. So not all of them, obviously, but they don't understand the culture to respect. Like when you, when you see, obviously that chain didn't mean anything to them. And I get it, it's, it's from a different area, right? But at the end of the day, when there is no line of respect on both ends, when you come to your city, I mean, we come to your city, you come to our city and all that kind of stuff, it starts to mess with the money. And that was, like, the hip hop has been doing a good job at getting away from that. But back in the day, like, rappers did not tour a lot at all, like at all. And only the bigger, bigger acts, like heavily, got a chance to tour and that's because like people didn't really want to book people because like we, we afraid you know what i'm saying like it's like we we don't want the insurance policy like that was one of the problems when it came to even um six nine he was huge obviously so people like there were you know people paid the bill and all that stuff and he was able to overcome certain things but at the same time like you have if you hell of a ins- you have a hell of an insurance policy just because we think some violence or something wild might come so I don't, I don't like the fact that some of the money's being messed up. But Jay Prince, at the end of the day, yeah, I don't know how to feel about that situation. I can't really speak much outside of it, the fact that it was odd to me. It was unexpected, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I think – yeah, I agree with you, man. It, it really does mess up the money, and I think that's, like, the main thing. Like, a lot of people don't really take that into consideration with 6 9 Like, that killed his money, bro. You know, not being able to do shows nowadays – Touring is the only way you 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 really get paid. Like back in the day, the East Coast, the West Coast war, the fact yeah. that New York artists felt like I can't go to LA, that was crazy. Like that was a lot of money, a lot of publicity, a lot of promotion that just had to be missed out on because ah, I can't go over there. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, man, that's that's like a huge thing. And I even look at like violence on a higher level. Like look at all like. Biggie and Tupac's old friends, and then look at Jay Z's friends. Like Jay Z's friends is all rich because he was able to live and continue being Jay Z, you know. But versus when you die, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money that's not being generated, and it's just a lot of people that it affects. It's it's just it's bigger than just the one artist. It's a lot of it's a whole family, a, a whole label, employment, staff, all types of jobs lost yeah. from violence. You know what I'm saying? So when artists get killed or artists get brought to jail, it, it's, it really does involve more people than just the, the person that, that the general public sees. And, and you know what I'm saying? And it, it, it's, it, this is a business at the end of the day. So when you take away an a, a artist, that's a whole entity. That's a whole brand. 
That's like Nike being taken away. You know, if, if Kanye mm-hmm. went away right now, it'd be like Nike gone. Anybody that work for Nike, you out of a job, figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it's like, yeah, man, I, I think, you know, all of that, all of that is whack. And, and we got to get back to like really understanding respect and, and all of this type of stuff. Cause Jay Prince, he, he really not the guy um, to be fooling around with. You know what I'm saying? All that. You That's know. the thing. You know what I mean? Like, from everything I hear, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything I've known about him, he's not that dude. You know what I'm saying? You're not, you're not trying to fool around with him. So, I, yeah, I don't know how this, this situation is going to be resolved. But the fact, let me, like, th- th- that post, though, because he, this is, th- the post was like, I want to take this time to clarify my message to the people I tagged in my previous post. Oh, he, like, so he came back and tried to clarify, actually. Yeah. <laughs> So he explained. Uh, did you see this? Nah, I didn't see that. I didn't yeah, see he that. explained singling out A Boogie, Cardi B, all these people. So let me see what he said. He said, let me cl- make myself clear. I was never asking any of y'all for help in any capacity. I don't need you. I don't know you or trust any of y'all to do anything concerning the streets for me. Sheesh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, <laughs> I witnessed the clown campaigning, bragging, and snitching on himself on a public video about robbing industry people in your backyard. So I took it upon myself to alert the ones I have respect for. It is clear to me that went over some of y'all heads. Just for more clarity, I've been having ties in the Bronx. I've been having ties in the Bronx and throughout New York for a long time, and now it's gotten even stronger with my youngsters. So don't give any of the people I tag credit for what others earn because all they strength, because they all strangers to me, other than music. Yeah, he he goes on, man. Like, oh geez. yeah, J Prince. He's one of them guys. I feel like just from like reading, listen, reading his book and stuff like that. I feel like um. He's one of them guys where, like, you know, he's from the South, and he's generally a respectful person like most people from the, from the South. But if you cross him, man, he's, he's going to make you regret it. That's, 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 pretty much, <laughs> that's pretty much, like, what I got from the book. He was one of those guys where he nice yeah. until he senses that you, you, you trying to do him wrong, and then he's just going to he's just gonna do what's necessary. You know what I'm saying, and, and I, I really would would would, would lead that alone, man. If if you yeah. a rapper from the Bronx, um, I would really stay away from anybody that's trying to antagonize that situation at all. Oh, okay, well, he said he said to all of you so-called gangster clowns, there's a time and a place for everything, and I'm going to give you what you ask for. <laughs> 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 and that's the most that's the most respectful way I've ever heard anybody threaten somebody. <laughs> yeah, man. He said to all of you trying to narrow down my message to me wanting a chain lacks the depth of understanding that real street dudes have. All right. So uh yeah, it's more than that, people. Yeah. I yeah, I, I had not seen this. I know this. Sheesh. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hmm. Well, well, uh, let's stay tuned for that situation. Let's put it that way. Yeah, man. And then another artist that I feel like, you know, his name kind of blew up off of a story related to violence. But I, I feel like actually, like, he's actually not coming across like that type of dude at all is the baby. You know, I think, yeah. you know, the story of the violence was definitely an interesting point to get us all to turn our heads. But I think that, um, you know, just... The more I I see the type of person he is through social media and just mm-hmm. kind of you know everyday stuff, I actually seen him perform uh, last month. So I I don't know. He just comes across like like a like a real genuine artist. Um, he doesn't come across like someone that's trying to promote um, you know violence as a way to 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 get to the top. Even though that's been a part of his story, and I don't know his come ups. Just it's been fun to watch, man. Just from a, a digital marketing perspective, I th- I think he's really doing some things that a lot of artists should tune into and kind of just keep a close eye on them and you know stuff like that. Well, so I didn't know you went to one of his performances. How was that performance? How was okay, he so uh, all right, so to clarify, I really wasn't exactly a, a performance. He came to um, UMG and did an album playback. So uh, playback is kind of like. It's kind of, it's, it's like an internal show almost. You play the album, you don't exactly perform, 
you kind of just dance around. It, not not so much it's like, like it's like that Bobby Schmurter shit that they that they play back. <laughs> I was about to jump in and say not so much like that. That was an extreme case scenario. I was gonna say, man, that's not a, that's not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> that that was indeed a a, a playback, but okay. this one wasn't. That was a very extreme version of that. They were in a conference room. This one was in the lounge. That gotcha. one, he's jumping on conference tables. That was a little extreme. Um, okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> uh, but, well, I do. I I agree with you, man. Like everything I've seen from him so far, it seems pretty authentic. But you know, some people, when it comes to shootings and just violence and all that stuff, sometimes you might wonder: Are they using this to come up, or are these stories even real? Everything seems to be real. Everything seems to check out. But he doesn't seem to be promoting it himself you know what i mean or about pushing that in that way which i can respect because his whole image although he's from where he's from is not that dude you know what i mean it's, right. it's more we i'm here to have a good time you know obviously if you if you want to turn it into another type of time then we can make it time for that too but like for the most part man like i love that like he's running running around in a diaper right like he he has that knack for like i'm just i'm gonna take advantage and get some attention he's always he's doing a lot of things to get attention but his music backs it up like first time i heard about him like was literally just i was on youtube one day and this song called 21 uh this video had this uh beautiful chick in it so i, I that might have been a part that took my got my attention at first but then i was listening to it and i played that song back and i played it back and i looked it up on spotify i, I rock with that song heavy yeah but that video was just a catchy tune and, and then I started hearing all this violence and stuff like that. And matter of fact, something real interesting about uh, the baby that maybe I got to look into because that song 21, I swear it dropped like last year. It was a minute ago and the video and everything, I heard about it, I watched it, it was rocking. But then when, when I tried to look at uh, find it again, it says that it only dropped a month ago, the video. So I don't know if he like took it off, some kind of label situation. But that, I think that's something to look into. I wonder if he got certain things going on in the background as far as change of business or something. Yeah, he definitely signed the Interscope. My homegirl um, signed him. Um, when did he sign? I want to say October. I want to say minute. October he signed. So it's been a minute now. It's been about six months. But one thing I think is interesting, and it's kind of like a theory that I have as far as just like artists and careers, is really using. Um, outside events to really accelerate what you have going on so for the baby i think what was critical for him is that you know signed in october yeah you got november december january build up build up is is now accelerated true and then ever so conveniently you get an event like all-star weekend in your hometown of charlotte and i think that was a nice weekend for him to really go from for real. And I, I yeah. think this I think this happens more than people take note of it. You know, like yeah. even in Rick Ross' career, I always tell people, like in 09, Rick Rick Ross had a really good year. And then 2010 was like his coming out party as far as like really being one of the hottest rappers in the game. Yeah. And ever so conveniently. He drops Teflon Don in July of 2010, summer of uh, some summer of 2010. But ever so conveniently, a week before or a week after, I believe it was, LeBron James and Chris Bosh come to his hometown. Yeah. And I, I I really believe that that put a lot of momentum in Rick Ross's uh, you know, not his come up, but his 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 rise to like really controlling the game and being one of them one of them figures that was just high at that at that particular time. I'm with you on that. I, I feel like I feel like that's what winners do anyway, man. Like if you gonna right. win, you gotta be able to take whatever energy is popping anywhere. There's always windows of opportunity, some shit gonna happen that you didn't expect. Yep. And you should be able to flip that and it's yeah. into yourself that's real I, I see what you're saying yeah and i think that was like a big a big reason because then like seven months later he signs meek miller wale and then they always in miami it was never like niggas were in philly 
or DC. They were always in Miami. I mean, you know, I think there's more reasons. Of course. <laughs> Miami, yeah. Miami, yeah, you the know, same no reason. The same reason LeBron was there, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I, I, I do believe that, man. And I think that happens, you know, in the game where um, real life events will really just control. Like even even like I always tell people Thriller ain't the number one selling album because it's the best music. It's the number one album because it, it came out at a time when artists. Artists were it was video was becoming the thing. And okay. it started it started moving from a musician to an artist, a music artist, a a pop star. It, it, like I feel like before I feel like before the early 80s, star power wasn't even a term that was thrown around like that. I think Madonna and Michael and, and Prince and these 80s people, they really are what made the celebrity the celebrity. And a lot of that was because MTV was coming of age. And then MTV, and then MTV's coming of age is less about just how the music sounds it's about who's a star what is the video what is the what is the the and michael was the best at bat when it came to that he gave us thriller yeah at a time when video was was coming of age and i think that is the trickle down thriller is the trickle down you get from technology meeting its its prototype you know what i'm saying as far as just Michael being such an amazing dancer, such an amazing performer, and then taking music videos to heights that are barely reached today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's real. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can get with that take because at the end of the day, like Michael, his videos are just synonymous with him in general. And that, that played it. Whatever his music did and would do by itself, his videos was definitely, they were definitely uh, steroids. To whatever else is going on and he's like he is the like the pop star he's like the first like for real like he was the king of pop but because he he basically created pop you know what i mean there was a few other like you said madonna's and all that stuff but they together they really created pop pop like music like he was doing this rock and roll sound and stuff he did some r&b sound and stuff he had a little soul here and there you know he already had a pre-established career that people knew him for and like you always have these figures that once they establish it and they reach such a height, everybody's trying to copy Michael uh, Jordan. I mean Michael Jackson, but in the same way with Michael Jordan, right? He was the first one like before NBA, right? You are, right. you got it was Dad, then Magic and Larry Bird brought it back, and they became stars. But he was the only one to be just one person and take it to a new height. And now you always trying to say that's why they're like, who's the next Jordan? Who's the next Jordan? Or is it Kobe? Kobe wasn't really playing that media game like that. They they rock with LeBron because LeBron is a marketer. That's what he's a the bit like basketball is it's arguable, but he's the first like his contribution is marketing and politics. That's what LeBron really does. Like no other athlete is done. Yep, 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 yeah. And it's a lot of people have different perspectives. I don't know if you heard one time. Um, Stephen A. Smith was kind of going in about that, saying LeBron ain't really at the level of, like, because I, I guess he felt like Skip was, like, giving him too much credit, and he was kind of just like, man, you know, this dude, he he's okay, but compared to Muhammad Ali, compared to this guy, compared to that guy, he's, he named a whole bunch of people. I was like, ah, oh, man, I never thought of that. Wow. <laughs> Muhammad Ali is a whole nother monster, man. That's, yeah, a whole different, that's a whole different monster. <laughs> That's a whole different monster. That dude sacrificed his life, and the way he just, the way that dude talked, man, like that. Yeah, that's that, that, that's a whole other game, man. You can't you can't repeat that. LeBron's doing his, he he got his own space. He's carving that out. But yeah, Muhammad Ali is like good guy. Yeah, well, like that's what I try not to do, man. But like them trying to dim other people's light by comparing them to somebody else great, where it's like they really don't have no business being compared to him in the first place. And they that's really it. Yeah. And that, I think that's really like one of the problems with hip hop, everybody wants to like compare something to something we've already seen before. And a lot of times that's what that does. It'll diminish, you know, what we're looking at. Cause people will look at an artist and they'll say, oh, well he's not, he's not doing what this person's doing or he didn't sell what Drake sold. Or, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And it's just like, well, you know, everybody's not in it for the same things. Everybody's not here to accomplish the same things. Like we need an artist that sells X amount and, takes work hip hop globally and then we also need an artist who could like 
motivate people to get out the hood. And usually that's not the same artist. <laughs> like they have to talk about, they have to approach hip hop completely differently to accomplish these two things. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, let, let these guys, let people do what they do best. You know what I'm saying? YG isn't going to do Drake numbers. You know what I'm saying? Nipsey isn't going to do Drake numbers because they're, they're, they're accomplishing something different. Just like Drake isn't really going to motivate many people to, to, to get out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drake don't really like, I'm sure what he, what he represents for Canada there's probably some motivation there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So right. of that, like across in the U.S. or for Black people, Drake doesn't represent much in terms of like emotionally motivating, which is interesting. Yeah. Like like Kendrick and J. Cole, they can move people. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like call them out, like let's vote, like that type of thing. But I but I respect that Drake seems to know that and 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 plays his lane. He doesn't try to be everything, even though. It, he tries to be everything musically and from an artistic standpoint. He doesn't, he, he does not, he doesn't connect with people on a real level. There was me. Right. He can, was like, we, we love your music. And maybe if I'm going to do some relationship shit, maybe, you know, we can, but, and we can have a good time to this. But yeah, you ain't gonna remind me of who my black heroes are. You know, like, I don't, <laughs> know, I don't even know if you have the knowledge of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it's, yeah. if, if, there's, if there's something going on in politics, we're not gonna call you. You know, nah, you I think know. I think I think for me, I really um, I really lost a lot of like, I guess my fanship for him. I, I really lost a lot of that like around like 2015 when like that it felt like that that racial tension was just at the highest point. It was mm-hmm. like when Trump was running and like the Michael Browns and all this was happening. Eric Gardner's was happening and yeah. it. Was, like everywhere and like right when Kendrick dropped to Pimple Butterfly and right before that if you remember Drake dropped if you're reading this too late and when I first seen that I'm, I'm like yo I know he's gonna talk about something real on this I know it this is the time <laughs> this is it yeah and he had like one bar on the last song where he was like oh niggas is killing each other and going to the movies and I, it was, he said something so vague and like so like that's it like that that's it yeah and then kendrick comes out two months later with the blackest most like it just sounded like any bit of frustration and rage that we was feeling at the time so i don't know if he feels that i don't know if he connects with it that same in that same way i guess i don't know if that's like because he's truly from canada thing because he he does he doesn't he doesn't i can tell you he said, like, racism, he didn't, he didn't grow up or feel it the same way. I saw something that, where he said that. I don't know if that was true, because I'm sure racism exists within Canada in some ways, or colorism, but it made it seem like he didn't have that experience fully, even though he did experience some, like... You know what? Because I think Canada, I'm not too versed in, in, like, Canadian culture, but I know it is completely different. It's not America. I don't even think they had slavery the way we did. Like, if they, if, if they ever did. Like, I, I think it was a totally um, different situation, and, and that makes the whole culture different, you know what I'm saying, versus America, where we well-versed on racism. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want to be or not, like, you try not to be if you aren't, man. Like, I think, but once again, like, I don't, I don't discount Drake for that, though. I just, like, I actually honestly respect it. If he doesn't feel like his his place to say it, or he just doesn't have anything to say, I'd rather that than somebody use it and troll, like and 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 use it as a way to promote themselves forward. Like I'd rather him take certain music, like how people say he he's a culture version on people's music. I'd rather him do that with music than do that with actual like race. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so right. like, you know he, he makes good hits. Drake will, Drake will be all right, but I do for real want to understand like more of his personal background. I would like to hear that in music, like more from struggle, but maybe he just doesn't have it. He don't he might not have them experiences that we got that we can connect with in that way. And that just might be what it is. Nah yeah, that's a fact, man. It's a whole fact. But yeah, man.